Hi there, Ron Spomer here. I'd like to talk today about all copper monolithic bullets. They're becoming much more common in the marketplace and in some jurisdictions, they're mandatory. Now, I've had the good fortune as an outdoor writer for 40 years to hunt around the world and take a lot of different animals with a lot of different rifles, cartridges, and bullets. And I think some of my experiences might shed some light onto the performance of these all copper bullets. Let's go down into my shop and check them out. Now, before we go any deeper into this, we should probably call for a definition of terms. What's a bullet? Seems obvious, but a lot of people call this a bullet, but it really isn't. This is a cartridge. It consists of a primer that's stuck in the back of a brass case filled with powder. And then that is capped with the bullet. Of course, the primer ignites the powder, the gases expand and drive the bullet out of the barrel. And the bullet is what does all the work. This is why we need to pay a lot of attention to our bullets. We get all wrapped up in our fancy rifles and which cartridge is better than the other. All those are just launch pads for the bullet. It's the bullet that kills the animal, that does all the work. It's the most important component that we're working with. So it's important to understand it. Now, bullets come in all sorts of sizes, obviously caliber. That's the diameter. It has to fit your bore properly. Then you've got different lengths, short bullet, a long bullet. Well, the shorter ones are obviously going to weigh a little bit less. The longer ones are gonna weigh a little bit more, but that also depends on the materials within them, the specific gravity. Copper is a little bit lighter than lead. So you're gonna have a longer bullet of the same weight if it's in copper versus lead cord. So you've got round nose bullets and some exposed points on a spire point that has some lead sticking out of the tip. You've got flat nosed bullets. Then you've got the new modern sleek, very low drag bullets that have an extremely sharp nose and long boat tail for efficiency. That's aerodynamic efficiency, but it could be made out of any number of materials. Hollow point bullets, the plastic tip bullets that a lot of people call ballistic tips. That's actually a brand name from Nosler. You can have a polymer tip like this on any brand of bullet, it doesn't make it a ballistic tip. And that is to improve its efficiency, get rid of the exposed lead nose so you don't get battering within the magazine and denting of that lead nose. So uh, a lot of options to pick from. Now here's a what looks like a ballistic tip bullet, but it's really just a polymer tip on a Barnes TTSX bullet, tip triple shot. That is an all copper bullet except for the plastic tip. Round noses, and again, you get into your slugs for shotgunning. And again, you can have a lead filled bullet with a polymer tip, or you can have an all copper bullet with a hollow nose in the front. And there's your hollow. So that's an all copper non leaded bullet. And then here's nothing but a lead bullet, the good old fashioned Foster slug. So you've got a lot of options to choose from. Now, the second thing we want to consider is how this bullet actually kills an animal. And it seemed like an obvious question, but I think most of us assume that a bullet just smacks that animal so hard that it kills them. So we are always thinking about a faster, bigger, heavier bullet that really knocks them down. Well, that's not necessarily the way bullets terminate the life force of an animal. Strike an animal in the central nervous system, say from the top of the withers through the spine forward to the brain, and it lights out immediately. Shoot him through the heart though, and don't expect him to die immediately. Go for several seconds without his heart functioning. Until the blood pressure drops, he gets dizzy and falls over. That's what you often see with a heart shot animal. Sometimes though, those chest shots do end up in an animal falling right there. What's going on? Shock effect. It's like dropping a boulder into a lake. Can you see the energy waves moving out? They can move through an animal's body clear to the brain and disrupt it that way, but you can't depend on it. So what do you want in a bullet? You want reliable expansion because that increases tissue destruction, but you need a good sized shank behind that to continue moving it forward. Keep your momentum going. This is what we're looking for in our bullets. We can get those in lead based bullets, but also in copper based bullets. During 50 years of hunting, I've made it a habit to autopsy my animals to see what sort of damage the bullets did. I also try to recover those bullets so as a result, I've got bags and bags of recovered bullets and notes on what happened. This has given me some insights into our bullet types today and how they perform. So let's examine our different types of common bullets and just see what makes them tick. 
A basic cup and core bullet is nothing but a jacket of gilding metal or copper in various thicknesses into which lead is inserted. It can be poured in or it can be stuck in as a cable, and then the bullet is squeezed into the shape of the bullet. You could have a plastic tip on it, you could have exposed lead tip, or the lead could be flush with the top, hollow nose, a lot of options, but they all have one thing in common. The lead is not attached to the jacket other than a mechanical squeeze. So what do these cupping core bullets look like after impact? Let's check. This is what you can expect from cupping core bullets. Sometimes you get a perfect mushroom like this with a good shank behind it, but notice the smooth surface. These things tend to ball up and act about like a lead ball would have in the old days with a muzzle loader. Sometimes you just get a bunch of crumbled up mess various stages of rip and tear. But what you don't want usually is this, breaking up the cup comes apart and the lead in the middle is separated from it. That reduces your penetration. In many cases, the lead core can fragment into tiny pieces that are distributed surprisingly far from the main wound channel. These are rarely recovered, but when a lead bullet loses half or more of its original mass and it doesn't exit the animal, well, that lead has to have gone somewhere. Now, externally, the partition style bullets don't look a lot different than cup and cores. It's the inside that matters, and they have a transverse wall of jacket material through the center. That separates some lead in the shank, so even if your lead in the nose is lost, it continues driving forward for deeper penetration. That's the value of the partition style bullets. Now, as a partition, Swift A-frame are a couple of examples. Now, here are what our partition bullets look like after impact. Terminal performance is usually pretty good. The nozzle partition without the bonding of the lead nose, you end up with losing all the nose lead, but you keep a shank and that drives forward. A-frames at various impact speeds. Classic performance. This one obviously hit some major bone and got quite mangled, but the important thing to remember with all of those partition bullets is you're going to retain some weight in the shank because it's locked in and that helps with your penetration. Never judge a book by its cover. These are bonded bullets. They can have a polymer tip. They don't have to. They could be hollow, flat. The critical part about a bonded bullet is that internally the lead is molecularly bonded to the jacket material. Essentially it's welded so the two can't come apart. You still lose some lead to friction, but generally these will retain a lot of their weight and they will stay in one piece, which helps of course with deeper penetration. Okay, how do bonded bullets perform after impacting an animal? Well, let's look at some of those. Bonded bullets generally keep much of their weight because of course the two parts are bonded. You can have some pretty violent strikes like this one in major bones and they'll stay together now. The lead can erode away from the surface, but it's going to stick in one piece and that gives you deep penetration, even with a little 22 caliber bullet like this. 224, and that's just a classic mushrooming that you'll see with your bonded bullets. Monolithic bullets can come in many shapes and sizes. They can have a polymer tip or just a hollow plain tip, but they've all got that hollow in the nose and that's what allows them to expand. Tissue gets in there, it opens under hydraulic pressure because there's no lead in the bullet, there are no pieces to come apart. They maintain almost all of their weight and that gives them deep, deep penetration. And you end up with a bullet that generally looks like that. Good expansion, ragged edges on the pedals, a long shank to continue driving forward. That's your monolithic bullet at work. We have several brands here, and they all work about the same. Classic expansion across the front, ragged edges on some of the pedals. Sometimes the pedals break off, other times they don't. Depending on the velocity, you get deeper or shallower expansion of the nose. Sometimes you end up with just a slug with most of the pedal's broken off, but still you're penetrating deep through the animal and doing damage as you go, even if you lose a lot of those pedals. Bullets that expand excessively or break up create wide but shallow wound channels as shown in this wax tube we shot into. Those that expand less but retain more mass create longer but narrower wound channels, and that's generally what these monolithic bullets do. So have you heard that these monolithic bullets can be inaccurate, raise pressures and foul barrels? Well, I certainly have, and I've experienced all of it, but these days they've got it pretty well solved. Here's what's going on. An all copper bullet or a gilding metal bullet that's solid 
is harder than a lead core bullet. It can't squeeze down or obdrate to fit the barrel precisely, so it's going to be a little less accurate if it's not perfectly matched up to your barrel. And because that bullet is longer for a given weight than a lead core bullet, it's gonna have more surface area to touch the barrel. That increases fouling, that increases pressures. Now, they've solved most of that with these relief grooves on their bullets. It reduces the surface area, reduces the friction, reduces the fouling, bingo. And the accuracy actually increases. I've got great accuracy with these. There's at least one bullet on the market that has a raised ring around its center. That's its driving band. The rest of the bullet is just at bore size, so it's going to touch the lands, the top of the rifling, but not get down into the grooves. It solves the problem just in a slightly different way. So there are a few bullets on the market that are still unbanded, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're not going to be accurate in your rifle. You just have to try them out because some rifles love them. And the other issue is that they've got some of those bullets that are not pure copper. They've got five to 10% zinc in them, so that makes them gilding metal the same material that's used on the jacket of lead core bullets. Try them, I think you're gonna find some that are accurate and don't necessarily follow your barrel or raise your pressures. What about this idea that the bullet should stay in the animal and dump all of its energy rather than passing through and wasting energy on the hillside beyond? Now, I don't really subscribe to that because I've seen it happen every which way. And the animals that I've taken when the bullet stayed inside didn't necessarily fall down any faster than the ones when it shot through. So you are definitely going to get these copper bullets to pass through the animal. Now we once did a little bit of a study with some ballistic gelatin, about 24 inches of it, shot a 180 grain Barnes TSX bullet through it, clocked the speed on the backside and factored in the remaining energy. When those bullets hit the front, they were carrying about 3,000 foot pounds of energy. When they exited, they were carrying 258. So I think that's more than enough energy dumped in the animal to do the damage but do expect those bullets to move all the way through. I like the fact that they leave a pretty good side hole for blood trace, because as I've said, even the times I've shot animals in which the bullets stayed inside, they didn't necessarily die right there. Heart shots, lung shots, even broke some shoulders and hit the lungs and the heart, and that animal still ran a significant distance and it was difficult to locate. So I always appreciate a good blood trail. That's what I get with these copper bullets. Now to address twist rates and stability. Every rifle barrel has a certain rate of twist. One complete turn in eight inches, 10 inches, 14 inches. Those are standardized for each cartridge so that the manufacturers of the ammunition know how long to make the bullet. It's the length of the bullet, not the weight, that determines stability. And this is why you can't usually find all copper bullets that weigh as much as the top end heaviest lead-based bullets in a given caliber. 270 Winchester, 150 grain bullet in lead. You go to a copper bullet and probably the heaviest you're gonna find is 130 grains. Make it 150, it gets too long, it won't stabilize in 270 barrels. If you're a hand loader, just look on the box. It'll say there for a one in nine inch twist only, you know what to do. Factory ammunition, they're loading it to fit the standard twist rates. No need to worry about that. Accuracy with copper bullets is just fine. Hey, if you have to hunt with a slug shotgun, you're in luck. There's nothing to touch the bore. The copper is inside of the plastic sabo. So you don't have any of the fouling problems and the raised pressure issues. You could really put a punch on a deer with one of these big bullets. Now, if you thought the old lead slug, the foster type, mushroomed really well and hit hard, well, you try these all copper jobs. They can either have a hollow in the nose or they can cap it with a little plastic tip, but it's still gonna drive in there and peel that open into a big star that's got rough ragged edges and it's really wide, punches a really big hole. There's a lot of energy in that 12 gauge slug and they work really well in 20 gauges too. So you've got a lot of options without the problems you get with a rifle. Slug gun hunters have it made when it comes to monolithic bullets. Now let's talk trajectory. Can a copper-based bullet keep up with a lead-based bullet for downrange performance? And we're talking flat trajectory and wind deflection. Well, they can. As long as your muzzle velocity is the same and the ballistics coefficient rating of the bullet are the same, you're gonna have the exact same trajectories. Now, it's easier to get a higher ballistics coefficient in a lead-based bullet because part of BC is the weight or the mass, the density of the bullet. But if you keep the form factor really good on those copper bullets, you can come pretty close to matching. And you can often drive the lighter weight copper bullets fast enough to even things out. Not a big problem unless you're an extreme range shooter. 
Just remember, go for the highest ballistics coefficient in your bullet and you will get the least amount of wind drift and the flattest trajectory, whether it's lead-based or copper-based. Well, I have tested, worked with, and hunted with these monolithic copper bullets now ever since they came out in the late 80s, early 90s. And I find them to be pretty reliable. Early on, I had a few oopses with them, but they seem to have corrected all of those problems and they really work well and reliably now. I find that they're about like the performance of a good controlled expansion lead-based bullet. I expect about one and a half to two times original diameter expansion at the nose, a good long shank behind it to continue driving forward. They're going to retain 90 to 100% of their weight in most cases. So I expect them to shoot broadside through most animals, leave a good sized hole in the blood trail on the outside. If I need to shoot from a weird angle, they're gonna reach the vitals. They will handle big bone and massive muscles really well and keep penetrating. You can shoot them in handguns, slug guns, muzzle loaders, rifles. Hey there, they're the same bullet, ballistics are the same, physics are physics. This is the way this stuff works. There's nothing magical about it. It's just a glorified rock we're throwing at these animals and these copper bullets make for a pretty darn effective rock. Hey, if you have more questions, you want to search more about ballistics and shooting, visit me at ronspomeroutdoors.com and always hunt honest and shoot straight.